Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Max, and I have the uh, pleasure to be the captain for today's operation, flying from uh, Warsaw Shopping Airport to London's Heathrow Airport, and then back to our home base on our uh, beautiful Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce my colleague for today. It's Derek, who will be performing the uh, first officer duties on today's flights. We're currently, as you see, uh, we're currently in the uh, briefing room of our lot headquarters, and we're just about to start the uh, pre-flight preparation going over the required flight documentation, which Derek just received from the dispatch office. So if you would like to join us along, first off what we do is we look at the operational flight plan. We'll take the first leg and we'll go over the few details. So first and foremost, we'll look at the date. Is it correct? The actual equipment that will be flying on, so the 737-8 MAX. And today we have the second of our MAX of our five in our fleet. Sierra Papa Lima Victor Bravo. Uh, we take a look at the call sign that we're going to be operating with. So it's Lot 2 Hotel Romeo. Uh, the plan ID, it's the first, so there's no changes to the dispatch uh, as of now. Uh, the cost index for today will be 22. The block times, uh, block off or scheduled block off time will be 5.30. Uh, the arrival, scheduled arrival time will be 8.25. Flight time, 2 hours, 6 minutes and with a block time of two hours and 55 minutes. Uh, we're expecting 78 passengers, and the aircraft is actually in gate number five. So if you want to look at the aerodrome chart, we'll open up our Jepson uh, flight deck application here on our EFB, and we'll be located on apron three, gate number five. So pretty much uh, the routing uh, for today, uh, pretty standard routing. Uh, we can just verify that on the uh, EFB as well. Make sure that the uh, routing cross checks with the um, route that will insert into the FMC. Uh, next, uh, we'll uh, check the ground distance, which we'll also verify on board uh, once we complete the CDU pre-flight procedure that it makes, um, makes sense and it is correct. The wind component for today will be minus 23, so we're expecting a headwind. Uh, and the max shear for today, so the turbulence, expected turbulence en route is uh, around um, five, so around uh, a medium intensity turbulence around uh, Point Logan, so a little bit closer to the um, final destination, so London. Uh, let's look at the uh, fuel for today. Um, the expected ram fuel is 8,388, so we'll call it 8.4. Uh, we do have company fuel planned. Uh, around 20 minutes, which is our standard company uh, fuel for the London's Heathrow flights. That gives us around 600 um, extra fuel. Uh, so in case of a expected holding, mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we can take that 20 minutes into account. The estimated landing fuel for uh, today will be 3.5 um, tons. And the minimum diversion fuel, in case we need to divert, we have two alternates planned for today. It's London Gatwick, Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, and uh, Manchester Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. So in case we need to divert, our minimum diversion fuel will be 2.8. So I'm satisfied with this for now. There's uh, no critical terrain, obviously. There's a uh, low terrain throughout the whole route, and there's no MELs on the aircraft. Uh, so that's, uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, we're planning to fly, initially fly level 380, uh, and then we'll cross the border with Germany and step climb to uh, flight level 400. Uh, looking at the um, turbulence forecasted, it looks like uh, we can expect some uh, you know, moderate, even to severe turbulence en route. So definitely uh, looking at this picture, I will verify that with a significant weather chart, but it looks like flight level 400 uh, should be a good idea for today's uh, operation. Uh, next, uh, we have the um, takeoff landing report, which uh, pretty much um, we can calculate our performance from. We usually use our uh, ACARs uh, to calculate the performance, but in case we have uh, no communication with the ACARs, we can always revert to the uh, paper, pack. Uh, paper pack, exactly right. So the uh, performance, we just checked that the um, uh, route is correct. The date, obviously, the 5th of July. The aircraft is Lima Victor Bravo with the Leap 1B25 uh, engines. Uh, the most important here is the initial date that uh, we will set up the FMC with, uh, the, sorry, the ACARs with. So the 5th of July, the window that is the TLR is valid, it's 16 hours valid. The outside air temperature range from 11 to the uh, max temp and the Q&H uh, greater than or equal to 104, which is good. 
translating the root onto a pictorial view, we have the root chart, which uh, has the winds, the forecast is winds on our uh, flight level 380, so initial cruising altitude. It has a uh, certain um, uh, information regarding the alternates and obviously the en route alternates as well, uh, airports that are available en route. Uh, so it looks like uh, we'll start initially with a crosswind and that will slowly, slowly turn into a, a significant headwind. So uh, we'll look at the uh, big picture view of the weather, the significant weather chart. It's valid um, 6 UTC from the 5th of July. As you can see, there is quite significant weather that we can expect. Uh, so building a mental picture of what kind of conditions we'll encounter. Uh, as you can see, Derek already highlighted the essentials. Uh, there is, uh, first and foremost, we do have a clear air turbulence area, labeled number one, which we can identify here as moderate uh, turbulence from flyable 260 all the way up to flyable 450. We will be also crossing a uh, clear air turbulence area, number two, right here, uh, which is actually labeled as occasionally severe turbulence from 280 up to 380. Uh, other than that, we do have some isolated embedded uh, CBs forecasted uh, from below flyable 100 up to flyable 340. We should be well above that. We'll take that into account. Good, so the significant weather chart definitely corresponds to what we have uh, seen on the Jepson uh, flight deck application. So more or less crossing the uh, border with Germany around uh, Berlin, Hanover, and then uh, crossing into um, Holland's airspace, overflowing Amsterdam. We can expect some uh, moderate to severe turbulence. We'll definitely brief that to the cabin crew as well once we meet them. Mm -hmm. Good, for the weather itself, let's take a look at the um, the aerodromes that are of interest for us. So obviously, starting up with um, Warsaw, uh, right now it's, uh, winds are out of the west, 280 at two knots, it's 5,000 meters of visibility, there's mist, broken layer of clouds at 800 feet, temperature only 17 degrees, Q&H of uh, 1009. Uh, uh, there's a tempo, uh, 3,000 meters and mist, so the visibility might uh, decay. Uh, within the next two hours. For London itself, not too bad weather. Uh, it's uh, forecast is westerly winds, so 230 at six knots, um, more than 10 kilometers visibility, light rain showers, few at uh, 1,800 feet, scattered at 4,300 feet, temperature only 14 degrees Celsius. But there's no six, so there's no significant weather in their actual aerodrome. And only light rain so far. Only light rain, so typical London. <laughs> Uh, London weather, but uh, definitely should be some uh, nice views uh, overflying the city as we're going to be uh, approaching from the east, landing towards the west. The uh, scheduled um, time of arrival is 8.25, so we'll take the uh, long tap for now. It's still western, southwesterly winds, 10 kilometers visibility broken at 2800, and it uh, looks like that will stay throughout the whole um, period of our operation. Uh, just becoming in the evening, uh, rain showers and lower broken layer of clouds. Nothing too significant, I'd no. say. No. Good. Nothing of concern. Nothing of concern. All right, we'll check the uh, TAF for uh, the first alternate, Gatwick. Also, good weather, southwesterly winds, uh, no restrictions of visibility, scattered layer of clouds. So, no threats here. So, quick look for the Manchester TAF. There it is. Very, very similar weather. No significant weather um, for the alternates. Last thing we look at uh, in the briefing package are the NOTAMs. Uh, Derek already reviewed them, and uh, there is uh, nothing significant that would concern our departure, en route, or actual arrival. So just a quick glance over, verifying that there's no restrictions to the airport of interest, no taxiway closures, no runway closures, nothing that would impact our operation. London Heathrow, the only significant uh, element is the uh, closure of taxiway Alpha South between link 34 and link 30. So definitely um, once en route we'll, uh, we'll look at it. Standard operation CDA for London TMA. That is correct. So the last uh, NOTAM that we have, it's our company NOTAM. It's the requirement to perform a continuous descent approach uh, below 6,000 feet. Good. So that uh, pretty much encompasses the briefing package.
So the last step uh, for us is to decide on how much fuel we're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said before, we're uh, planned with a company fuel of 20 minutes. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable with taking flight plan fuel. If you agree, Derek, I, agree. I don't see any other threats that would um, require us to take extra fuel. No, no, no additional threats for the arrival. Awesome. So we'll, let's call 8.4 as our final uh, ramp fuel. And uh, as you can see, we have the application here for ordering fuel. Derek, if you actually mind. Uh, see here, our flight number, our date, our call sign, our flight, also to London. Our uh, additional information such as CTOT, TSAT, our gate that we're at, stand, our plan to enter, maximum landing weight, and currently what our plan zero fuel weight is, and uh, final fuel figures. Exactly right. The last information that is given is our tankering profit. We obviously always take into consideration the economics of the operation, and as you can see, tank rate, tankering fuel is not advised. Uh, so we'll definitely uh, take flight plan fuel, uh, so you can go ahead, Derek, so order it in the application. Perfect. And the last thing we do is we sign accepting the operational flight plans as is. Cool. So that is complete. There you go, sir. So uh, as we're uh, using the electronic flight bag on a day-to-day -day basis, um, we're moving into the paperless cockpit era. Right now it's less paper. So here, the first uh, tab that we open up in the uh, flight plan application will verify the uh, crew members um, that are planned for today. You can see I'm labeled as the captain, Derek as the first officer, then we'll have all the cabin crew members here listed with their uh, roles. We'll complete this tab. We'll move into the briefing tab. So in this tab, we'll look at the um, operational bulletins that are published by our company, all the essential and significant information that the company wants us to know before we obviously uh, go ahead with the flight. So we'll verify that all of them are, um, that we are acquainted with all of them and that no new briefing tabs are available. I'm satisfied with that, we'll complete it and the next step will be obviously to complete the fuel figures on board. So we just completed the uh, pre-flight preparation as you uh, saw. The next thing is to uh, brief the cabin crew and uh, obviously uh, after that we'll take the bus which will take us to the airport. Uh, we'll uh, go through security and go through the gate to the aircraft. Uh, so um, we'll see you on board in the flight deck in a few minutes. All right guys, well, welcome to the flight deck of our wonderful Boeing 737 MAX 8. Um, we just uh, commenced boarding, and just to keep you up to date, uh, once we entered the flight deck, we did the uh, preliminary pre-flight procedure, followed by the CDU pre-flight procedure. Uh, Derek, as the first officer in the pilot monitoring for this leg, was uh, doing the exterior inspection. Uh, once uh, he came back, he did the uh, CDU pre-flight check, and now we're going to perform the pre-flight procedure. So we'll start up with the light test, to verify all lights are illuminated and no light bulbs are needed to be replaced. And we use the general scan flow to verify that all lights are actually illuminated properly. Then on, we proceed on to the EFIS control panel. We'll set up a initially a flap retraction altitude in case of an engine out. As per company standard, we initially set 1,000 feet above AGL. So we'll bug three, 1,370 on the barrow. Flight path vector will be on. Q and H is 1010 one zero for now. The uh, VORs are both on 1 and 2. The weather radar is off, and the uh, EFIS control panel is as needed as per the pilot flying. We'll set the flight director to my side as I'm master pilot flying. Core 327 in case of a return for the ILS. IS is for now 100. Heading will be runway heading initially. We're planning to uh, depart runway 29 er Bank angle 25, altitude 6,000, plus 100. This is our company um, policy. Before we actually have our ATC clearance, we bug 100 extra um, from the expected SID clearance. So to remind ourselves that we have ATC clearance yet to come. Uh, next, we have the autopilot disengage bar up. I move to my um, oxygen panel, test it, and it's on a 100%. 
Next, we'll check the clock is in UTC. Takeoff config, cabin altitude config is um, extinguished. I'll test the auto and autopilot light test. Stab battery trim is extinguished. I move on to the flight instrument check. We verify two flags. Amber flags are illuminated. No VSPs and TCAS off. The um, airspeed indicator is showing 45 knots. The altimeter is showing uh, field elevation plus minus 75 feet. The flight director is uh, on and the rest of the AFDS panels uh, modes are blank. We next move to the uh, PFD normal switch. We move uh, to the scan flow uh, to the uh, ISFD. We verify the approach mode is deselected and the Q&H is 1010. I check my selectors in control, speed brake down detent, and no lights are illuminated. Thrust reversers are closed, thrust levers are idle, flaps are up as they should be right now. Parking brake is set, the energy short levers are in cutoff, stop trim cutout switches are normal. The VHF communications are set up as for now. We have the delivery frequency on VHF1, and we have our company operations um, control center frequency on VHF number two and active. I'll set up as pilot flying, the navigation set up both ILSs in case we need a immediate return and I'll set up the ACP audio control panel as required for flight. Last thing I do is put the uh, seats in the proper position and get my seat belts on and adjust rudder pedals as needed. So Derek, uh, pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Navigation transfer display switches. Normal auto. Window heat. On. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Heading 237, altimeter 1010. Zero, zero. Heading 237, altimeter 1010. Zero, zero. Parking brake. Set. Engine start levers. Cut off. Few pins. On board. Pre-flight check was complete. Thanks. So, QNH is 1010. Zero, zero. Zero. A firm. Elevation is 362 feet. Checked. And we have left 350. 350. And 350. Perfect. Okay. And uh, request ATC clearance. I can deliver each and every lot to Hotel Romeo. Stand five information here. Request clearance. Dzień dobry, lot to Hotel Romeo, Capital London, Heathrow, flight plan route, low C7 Golf, climb initially 6,000 feet altitude, squawk 3444. Clear to London, Heathrow via low C7 Golf departure, climb initial 6,000 and squawk 3444. Lot uh, to Hotel Romeo. Lot to Hotel Romeo, dziękuję. Clearance correct, Tango weather report ready. Uh, Tango and uh, Wilco, thank you, I'm a uh, lot to Hotel Romeo. Delivery lot okay. 8561, three ready. Okay. Alrighty, I heard low C7 Golf. Check. 6,000 feet, squawk 3444. Four. And that's checked. Okay, so for the departure briefing, uh, initially we're on chart 10 9 Bravo, effective 22nd of April. We're on stand 5, expecting a standard routing. Uh, for the threats, we'll treat uh, home base complacency as a threat, so we'll just uh, mitigate that by um, verifying that the taxi clearance is as expected. So, expecting the departure to be full length, runway 29er. Initial emergency briefing, before 80 knots, I will stop for any malfunction or master caution above 80 knots and before V1. I'll reject the takeoff for a fire, fire warning, engine of failure, predictive windshield warning, or if the aircraft is unsafe or unable to fly. If I decide to recheck, I'll call stop, simultaneously close the thrust levers, disengage the auto throttle, verify operation of RTO or apply max manual braking, raise the speed brake lever, apply max reverse. Once the aircraft is stopped, I'll set the parking brake and advise over the PA correct stations, correct stations. Your actions? My actions will be to call out any emissions, then it'll be thrust reverses to normal, speed brake up, all note the brakes on speed and uh, let ATC know that we're stopping on the runway. Yes, sir. We'll assess the situation and perform any required memory items. If I decide to evacuate, we'll do the evacuation checklist from the QRH. Mm -hmm. In case of engine problems after V1, up to 400 feet, no actions. Accept to cancel new warnings with the positive rate, raise landing gear. 400 feet or above, we'll set heading select, state malfunction, perform any required memory items. The engine failure procedure is a straight ahead, standard, direct uh, track 289. Flap track shelter is 1370. Gross weight considerations. Uh, we're expecting a below like max landing weight, so no uh, threats. Check. And we can uh, return for an ILS uh, to runway 33, longest runway with flaps and 15. we have that set up on the courses. Yes, sir. And the ILS as well. For the normal SID, it's on uh, plate 10-3 kilo. Check. Issued uh, 18th of June 2021, low C 7 Golf. The initial climb clearance is 6,000 feet. No particular threats, just as a reminder, as soon as possible, contact worse approach after departure. Over. And Expecting. transition altitude to 6,500. Yes, sir. 
Alrighty, for the terrain, uh, no threats. Highest MSA is 2,500. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, it's generally good weather. Uh, broken to 800, so no uh, threats. And um, operationally, we'll use auto throttle and la VNAV. We'll be armed for departure. We'll use a NADP two, Check. and we'll do today non-standard flaps one. Flaps one. Uh, for the supplementary procedures, we'll use the isolated pack operation during engine start. Uh, no MELs. For the plus, uh, do you identify any other threats that we did not uh, review or talk about? Uh, with the flaps one, just a reminder with the reduced tail clearance. Yes, sir. Yep. Very good. Yep, exactly right. Awesome. Any questions? Uh, no Anything questions. to add? No additions. All right, briefing complete. So, load sheet edition one. The um, aircraft is checked, version is checked, crew is good. Total number of passengers, 73. Check. Souls on board, 80. The zero fuel weight is 53.7. And that gives us a takeoff weight of 61.9. That is correct. The crew CG 21.2. 21.2. Well, the takeoff CG 26.2. 26.2. Good. Request performance. So, performance figures. You ready? Go ahead. In the remarks, we have wet runway CG alternate forward two, and caution flaps one in use. For the um, D rate, takeoff two. Check. Assume temperature 37. Check. Flaps one. Check. V speeds V1, 135, VR, 140, V2, 144. Oh, the engine failure procedure and flap traction altitude is as briefed, so no changes. And we have a rejected takeoff distance remaining of 313 meters. I see D rate, takeoff two. Assume that's temperature that's 37. Flaps one. V speeds V1, 135, VR, 140, V2, 144. And that is Christopher. Next page, NADP2. Good. So we got the performance figures ready. I'll do a quick PA to the passengers. I think the last passengers are boarding. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Your captain is speaking. My name is Maximilian Yemchitsky. On behalf of La Polish Airlines and the entire crew, I have the utmost pleasure to welcome you on board this Boeing 737 aircraft and our flight 281 shortly departing to London's Heathrow Airport. The flight time today will be two hours and five minutes. Uh, we shall be cruising at 40,000 feet. In a few minutes, we'll be fully ready to start our journey. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a pleasant stay on board. All right. Ground flight deck. Copy ground, all those circles, all hundred checked, pin connected, top bar connected, we are ready. Okay, fantastic. The parking brake is set. May we pressurize hydraulics? Sure. Okay, and stand by for pushback. Standing by. All right, Derek, request push and start. I can do delivery. Uh, Dr. Lord, two hundred Romeo, stand by, fully ready. Look to Hotel Romeo, Victor Weather for push and start call ground one to one decimal nine zero zero five. Thank you, Adam Guego. Copy Victor and ground on one to one nine zero five. Adam Guego, lot to Hotel Romeo. Ground in double lot to Hotel Romeo, stand five. Fully ready, request push and start. Lot to Hotel Romeo, thank you, Grand Vitam, start and push approved. Push and start approved, lot to Hotel Romeo. All right, Derek, before start checklist. Before start checklist. Flight deck door. Close and locked. Fuel. 8,400 kilograms, pumps on. Passenger signs. On. Windows. Locked. Locked. MCP. V2140 heading 289, altitude 6,000. Takeoff speeds. V1135, VR140, V2144. CDU preflight. Completed. Trim. 5.8 units, zero, zero. Taxi and takeoff preflight. Completed. Anti collision light. On. Before start checklist, thanks. Please. Ground flight deck. Yes. The parking brake is released. You are cleared for pushback. Parking brake is ready. Starting the pushback and uh, about engines, I will speak to you in a few seconds. Roger. Standing by for engine startup. Thank you. And got me ground. We are ready to start engines. All right, start sequence will be two, then one. Two is clear. Start engine number two. And then you can see the start valve has opened. The N2 is rotating. And around 18 to 22 percent motoring will show up. That's the BRM, bow rotor motoring. It's only on the max. 
and will last around 6 to 90 seconds. The engine is cold, so we're expecting the bow rotor motoring to last a few seconds. for light off within 15 seconds there's fuel flow and within 15 seconds the EGT will rise copy ground push five complete and preset parking brake parking brake is set parking brake is set we're moving it thank you Start a car up. Engine stabilized. Now we see two, five, seven, and fuel flow around 300. Good engine start up. So isolation pack operation. Dirty engine start. Supplementary procedures. Isolation valve close. Right back auto check. Perfect. And start engine number one. Starting engine number one. And uh, talking ground. Pin disconnected. Tow bar disconnected. Number one is clear. Thank you. Start a car up. Engine stabilized. Ground flight deck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got two good engine starts. You may disconnect. Uh, revert to hand signals left hand side. You have a good uh, morning. Sure. One person will be on left side uh, with a pin. Thank you very much. Have a nice life. Love you, Thank you, Chai Chai. See the ground crew flaps one. Flaps one. Flight controls. Ground load eight five seven five. Just to let you know, uh, Romeo intersection will be for us. Roger. So Echo Romeo holding. Roger. Echo Romeo holding point one. Eight five seven five. Recall. Check. Before taxi checklist. Before, take, uh, before taxi checklist, generators on, propeat on, NTS off, isolation buff auto, engine start switches continuous, recall checked, auto brake RTO, engine start levers idle tent, ground equipment clear. Before taxi checklist complete. Thanks. Request taxi. The ground road to Hotel Romeo. Request taxi. Road to Hotel Romeo. Taxi uniform Zulu Alpha Echo holding point tonight. 
Alright, as briefed, clear on the left. Clear on the right. Clear the left. And clear on the right. Thanks. My ATC? Yeah, ATC. Cabin is ready for departure. Roger, no changes, your ATC. My ATC. So take off review. Take off review. We have Auto Shuttle, Elnav, Vnav armed. Climbing initial 6000. Runway 29 of full length. Flaps 1 required. Selected and indicated. Checked. Weather radar on my side. And terrain display your side. AFM. And before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Flight controls. Checked. Flaps. One green light. Before tax uh, before takeoff checklist complete. Roger. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. So it looks like Wizard will be before us. Yep, sounds good. We need uh, two more minutes for the engine warm up. Uh, Wizard 275, Roger. Thank you for the information. Or not? Hmm. ready now. Hey, I'm ready for departure. Lots of hotel Roger. Lots two hotel Romeo Roger. Number one, line up runway two nine and we for take off wind two six zero degrees at front of seven one two eight eight zero five in first. Clear the takeoff on way 299, airborne 128805, Clear on the left. Check. All right, Derek, ready for a rolling takeoff? Ready for a rolling. Cool. So, ready? Ready. Takeoff.
and on toggle. Check. Trust set. Eighty knots. Checked. Throttle hold. V1. Rotate. Positive right. Gear up. Hell nerve. Maybe nav speed. Sure. Speed window set flaps up speed. Flaps up speed set checked. Flaps up speed checked. Lots of power lights. Set direct to deep low. Deep low. Execute. And after takeoff checklist. Alright, set flight level 100. Flight level 100 set. Set vertical speed. Uh, rate uh, 1500. 1000. MCP speed, vertical speed, and set speed 250. Speed 250 set. Checked. Uptake of checklist. Engine blades on. Packs auto. Landing gear up. And flaps up. No lights. Uptake of checklist complete. Thanks. Autopilot A, command, check. Transition. Altimeters standard. Standard set. Passing flight level 6, 7. Now, checked. There's the traffic. Check. Looks like a Ryanair 737. Flight level 240, Romeo. Flight level 240, Romeo. Clear to traffic. Flight level 240. Flight level 240, set. Check. Flight level 240, set. Check. Delta, contact. Delta, contact. Delta, contact. Delta, Flight level 100, I'll keep the passenger signs on. 
That's just a uh, stank seated. Direct map is with the 2724. So, plus 10, engine anti is on. That's the way approach, the zero coin shot 317, passing 1900, the minimum is closed. There you go. 317, contact line, flight level 80. Climbing level 80, 0 That's much better. So, engine anti is off. Nothing better than cloud surfing in the morning, huh? All right. Low 460, flight heading 120 to the left. Right. Heading uh, 120, low 460. All right, Derek, you ready for the uh, cruise briefing? Yeah, go ahead, I'm ready. All right, so we're at flight level 380. We're direct to Lima Zulu. Still in uh, Warsaw airspace, but uh, we'll shortly uh, transition to the um, Orion FIR. For the engine out, in case of an engine out, the max altitude is uh, 248, so we'll take flyable 240 uh, as we're heading west. The speed will be 221. For the, um, in case of an emergency descent, uh, the grid mora is below flyable 100, so we'll take flyable 100 as our safety altitude. For the FIR communications, we are CBDLC established in Warsaw, and we will be transitioned over to FIR automatically, so we'll keep um, the CBDLC communications. For the en route alternate, in case we need to divert, uh, I selected um, Berlin Brandenburg. Hey, the weather is nice, cab okay, no significant threats. There is an ILS approach uh, to runway 25 right since 25 left is closed, and we actually pre selected that on the course selectors and the nav setup. Is uh, We have the VOR inactive and the ILS in standby in case we need it. Check, and we have uh, at the moment 82 miles uh, straight ahead. Perfect, exactly right. Awesome. So, any questions for the cruise briefing? No questions. Anything to add? Nothing to add. Sounds good. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are established in the cruise. Initial flight level 380. We'll probably step climb to flight level 400 by the time we get to uh, Hotel Lima Zulu waypoint over in the uh, German airspace. Uh, we just completed our cruise briefing, so we're all both uh, satisfied of what our uh, actions will be in case of an engine failure or a rapid depressurization event. And uh, since we have some time, we can actually talk about uh, the CPDLC feature that we have on board of the MAX. Uh, so CPDLC will soon become mandatory in um, the European airspace. So in our um, uh, aircraft, the CPDLC is built into the uh, CDU. So we uh, line select key CPDLC on the application menu, and you can see there's a lot of prompts. So the first thing we do is log on status. We already logged on before, because in Warsaw we can log on uh, above flight level 285. As you can see here, we have the uh, flight ID, lot 2 Holter Romeo, which is our call sign. We are logged on to the Warsaw FIR, Echo Papa Whiskey Whiskey. Origin Station, which is our origin airdrome, Echo Papa Whiskey Alpha, Warsaw. Destination, Echo Golf Lima Lima London Heathrow. We are status logged on, so we are CPLC established. And if we want to retrieve the messages that we already uh, got from the ATC, we can go to ATC log and see all of the messages that were sent to us before. So the first one was the current ATC unit Warsaw. We got a uh, climb uh, clearance to uh, climb to flyable 380, which we, if we actually line select, we can see that it was accepted by us by uh, the um, uh, call Wilco. And we, uh, we climbed to flyable 380. The last message that we got was contact Warsaw Center on 134.225. That's actually our current ATC unit. Perfect prompts. There's an ATC message. So if we actually select that, we'll read it out loud. Contact Ryan Radar, contact Ryan Center, 133760. I will accept that, Wilco. Derek, Wilco, if you agree. 133670. Perfect. And uh, Derek has the pilot monitoring. We'll uh, contact Ryan Radar right now. Romeo, flight level 380, CPDLC. Search to Hotel Romeo, Ryan Radar identified. Proceed to UpNet. 
directs AppNet a lot to help Romeo. All right, we have another ATC message. And we have current ATC unit, Ryan Radar Center. And uh, since the uh, Derek is doing both by the flying pile monitoring, I'll do the uh, direct so routing. Up, up so um, Derek, Derek to uh, update confirm. Uh, execute. And since we're tracking an LDAV, the aircraft would automatically adjust course and proceed to the uh, waypoint that we just got the clearance to. So CPDLC is becoming more and more co uh, common in uh, certain flight decks. Uh, more and more airlines obviously are implementing it since it is going to become mandatory. We can request uh, certain aspects from the CPDLC, such as um, weather deviations. We can re request a step climb. We can request a speed um, or heading uh, from these prompts on these line select keys. So it's a very nice feature. It reduces the amount of uh, voice communications uh, to a bare minimum. So as you notice, Derek, when he communicated with uh, the next FIR, which was Ryan Radar, he pretty much uh, stated the flight altitude and um, stated CPDLC, which obviously confirms with ATC that we are CPDL established and they are able to communicate with us uh, via, via CPDLC instead of voice. So very nice feature. We both have it on the Max and the NG, so pretty much our airline is ready for the mandatory implementation process. So guys, welcome back uh, to the cockpit of our beautiful MAX aircraft here. Uh, like we talked about, we're cruising here at uh, flight level 380. And uh, we just crossed over the border of Poland and Germany. Shortly in about 30 kilometers, we'll fly directly over Berlin. And it gives us some time to talk about our flight route today to London Heathrow. So right now, uh, like I mentioned, we're just approaching overhead Berlin Brandon Airport which we can see on our route here. And currently ATC has cleared us to fly directly to Apnet. So from Berlin, we'll fly over the whole of uh, the central part of Germany to point Apnet, which we find on uh, just off the west coast of uh, Holland. So our routing will take us straight over the top of Rotterdam. And from Abnet, we are planning to uh, fly to Logan and expecting the Logan 1 hotel arrival for London Heathrow, runway 27 right, we have at this moment.